with the release of the Oculus Quest 2 a couple of months back, I think you'll agree with me when I say it is the most affordable and portable VR headset on the market to date. Portable being the key word here, requiring no PC to run the headset in standalone mode with a library of games waiting to be played. But what about if we do want to play those games that are available on the PC? Are we still able to play those VR games whilst keeping the portability? The short answer is yes, and let me show you how. As mentioned in a previous video of mine when we set up the Oculus Quest 2 to the PC using a USB cable, you need to make sure your PC is VR ready. Best way to see that is to go onto Steam, download the Steam VR Performance test application from the store run it to see if it's ready or not if it's not ready then i'm sorry but there's nothing we can do here you need to fully set up oculus quest 2 with a usb cable that either came in the box or just a compatible usb cable decent internet is recommended 5 gigahertz wi-fi is fine but yes wi-fi 6 is better personally i only use a 5 gigahertz wi-fi and it's been absolutely fine the software that's required is virtual desktop the virtual desktop vr patch which is available from sidequest application and also virtual desktop streamer app. All the software that's required will be linked in the description below. Another piece of software that's recommended but not essential to do this is the official Oculus Quest 2 application in order to change any graphical settings or update stuff. So the software, if you don't know where you're going with that, don't worry, we're gonna talk about it individually now. So the first thing we need to do is come to the Quest Store available on our web browser. Come over to the search bar and type in Virtual Desktop. Yes, this is a paid product and I'll be honest, I haven't tried the cheaper alternatives. But due to its high rating and decent upstanding within the VR community, it's suggested that this is the most reliable service out there. But if you're not comfortable with that and you want to try it out first or you're not entirely sure it's going to work with your system, Oculus does have a refund policy very similar to Steam. If you buy this product, you're eligible for a full refund within 14 days of that purchase when you have less than two hours worth of playtime on there. So if you load it up and it's absolutely terrible, you can ask for a refund from Oculus. But this is the only thing you need to pay for in this entire video. So now this should be available on your Oculus Quest 2 headset. Bearing in mind that you bought virtual desktop from the same account that you're using on your VR headset. The alternative to this is just to go on your Oculus Quest 2 headset, go to the store and buy it from there itself. It's pretty much what I did. Once you have purchased it, install it onto your headset now the next bit requires you to sideload something onto your vr headset go to the link in the description for the side quest to go to sidequestvr.com forward slash setup dash how to it's then going to ask you to download and update side quest and sign up depending on which system you're on you need to download your appropriate one i'm on windows 10 which means i'll download this right here once you've downloaded it feel free to click here or go to sign in in order to create an account with them now the next bit is the most confusing bit and will require a little bit of patience and a little bit of personal information as well. The point of step two is to create a developer account because you need developer permissions in order for this to run. Very simply, you go to dashboard.oculus.com. I of course have this linked up already to my Facebook account, but again, if you need to sign up as an Oculus developer, log in here. You can log into a non-developer account or if you already have one already, log in just there. Log into Facebook or if you've already logged into Facebook, it should be continue as your name. Click on that up at the top and it should redirect you to this page right here. Once you've logged in, it'll ask you to create an organization name. This can be whatever you want it to be, but this name is public. So make sure you're not really using your real name and use an online alias that you don't mind people knowing you by. For example, mine is I'm Connix. Once you fill that out, click I understand required and then submit it read through this or just click i agree and then submit again and there you go you should be redirected to this page and you should be good to go when i did this before it asked me for some personal information such as a bank details it didn't do it for me this time but when i go on to further tests it might actually ask me then just be aware that if you don't need to do it it's pretty good but if you do that it might ask you. This is why it didn't ask me for my verification because when I went into verification down here at the bottom on settings verification, I already have a credit card and mobile number saved to my account. If you don't have these two or one of these two, then it'll probably ask you for this. Step three requires you to install some drivers, but it's only Windows only. You can skip it for Macs and Linux. On this website, once again, the developer.oculus.com page, you'll be met with the Oculus ADB drivers. You have to read and agree to the terms of life licenses and then hit download once you've done that you just have to extract the file go in there usb driver and then go to this particular one called android win usb right click on it 
and then click install. In step four, you need your phone and you need the Oculus app. You need to follow this picture right here. Go to settings, connect to the Oculus Quest that will be connected to the internet right now. So if it's not turned on, turn it on, click more settings, go to developer mode and then turn on developer mode. Once you've done that, you reboot your headset. Step five, you need to connect up a USB cable to your Oculus Quest to your PC. So we have the SideQuest app installed on our computer and we also have virtual desktop installed on our Oculus Quest 2. And the point of all that is to install the patch on SideQuest to our Oculus Quest 2 in order for Virtual Desktop to talk to the computer correctly. So our next step is to ensure that we've got SideQuest opened. You then need to grab your Oculus Quest 2 and a USB cable in order to connect it up to your computer. What you should see in the top left hand corner of SideQuest is a little red dot, but when you plug it in, it should turn green. Once you have turned your Oculus Quest 2 on, if it says unauthorized allow in headset, you then need to put on your Oculus Quest 2 headset and allow the USB deep bugging or confirmation tool inside there. If nothing pops up, you then need to go to the cogwheel in the bottom right hand corner on your Oculus Quest 2 device, go down to developer and then enable the USB connection dialog. Once you've ensured that's on, unplug it, plug it back in and wait for the confirmation box to occur. It's a little bit buggy if you ask it to always remember this computer. So whenever just doing this, just make sure you click OK and follow the next steps. Now that our Oculus Quest 2 is downloaded, you then need to come to this virtual desktop patch. If you guys see it on the home screen, just simply go up to the top, type in virtual desktop and it should bring it to where it's located and go over to the right hand side to install tool headset. Once you have clicked that, it should say all tasks is completed down at the bottom and to find it up here, you then need to go to this little three lines with a tick it says running zero task right now and it says transferred successfully and that's all you need to do once you have followed that step and you've got the patch installed into your oculus quest 2 it, that means it's sideloaded onto there but now you know how to sideload content onto your oculus quest 2. next you need to come to this website right here which is vrdesktop.net to download the streamer app in order to send the information from your pc over to your oculus quest 2 via the virtual desktop app all you need to do is click this and then make sure you run it go through all the steps I've already installed this so just go through all the steps and then you're pretty much done and whenever you want to run it all you need to do is come to virtual desktop streamer this will run as a little system icon tray down in the bottom right corner it will say that this stuff impacts your performance when running this such as Nvidia in game overlay personally I've never felt like it's impacted performance but I haven't recorded with it either personally I've not seen any difference so the Nvidia in game overlay I just click close if you do want to turn this off though the instructions are here on the screen now let's get this set up when you open up the virtual desktop streamer application, you're going to be met with an Oculus username and preferred codec. Pretty much you find this username by loading up your Oculus Quest 2 virtual desktop app after the side loaded VR patch that's been applied. And if you go through the in application settings, it should end up asking you for a username. This is my username. So I'm going to type it in there and click save. So whenever you connect up your Oculus Quest 2 to the internet to try and find this, it's going to be looking for I'm Conics. Next, you're going to be asked for preferred codec. There is two options, HEV seen this H.264. Most people probably have seen the H.264 before, but not really seen this one down here. For me, H.264 is easier on my computer, whereas HEVC is a lot more demanding. I have not really seen much of a difference in terms of quality performance. So if I was you, I would choose H.264 and just leave it at that. Once you have done here, it's pretty much moving over to the Oculus Quest 2 to load it up and start everything there. So once you're in the Oculus Quest 2, load up your apps and it should be the first one right there. You need to connect it if it hasn't been already, but it should show your computer right there. As you can see, I'm running from 5 GHz Wi-Fi. The Games tab will allow you to play any Oculus Quest games that are available on your PC, as well as Steam from there. So it's a quick hotkey. Settings are the ones that you want to change. I usually leave it at Auto Connect. I disable the optimal resolution. I leave the environment quality at high. Now the frame rate, I do generally drop this down to 72 frames per second because that will really help with lag and input delay. And the desktop bitrate is very heavily dependent on your internet, so you need to check the speeds in which you can display it at. There's no golden rule here, just check your download and your upload speed on your internet by going to speedtest.net and then basically just play around with that setting. The higher it is, the higher input lag you're gonna have, whereas the lower it is, the less input lag you're gonna have. Now here on streaming, this is your game settings. I usually leave this on high to bring the most clarity and once again, bring down the frame rate. The VR bitrate is again, the same as the desktop bitrate. 
behavior is it's going to impact the input delay which is heavily important for when you're playing games such as Beat Saber. With VR bitrate the lower it is the more pixelated it could be as well. Play a little bit slide it up play it a little bit slide it up see what kind of works best for you and your internet 90 megabits per second works best for me. Advanced option sliced encoding I have this on it might not work for all GPUs but it's pretty good to reduce that input lag once again and same as with the color vibrance I'll leave that on. Here we can launch Steam VR which will allow us to go into the separate home screen that you see when you usually load up Steam VR which will allow you to select your games but again you can always go to the games tab and find them there and there you go that is how you set up the Oculus Quest 2 for a wireless PC VR experience. I would say it's pretty good it's all dependent on your internet if you've got quicker internet the better again with the 5 gigahertz versus Wi-Fi 6 the difference is is that instead of 866 megabytes per second that you've got as terms of bandwidth you'll have like 1200 instead but again that's all dependent on your internet and if you can even handle it me personally i have a gigabyte internet which will allow me to do up to 1000 megabytes per second but the vr bit rate doesn't even let you to go that high and the input lag is quite noticeable if you like what you saw here and you felt like this guide was very helpful please hit that subscribe button like button if you want to see some vtubing see this kind of stuff in action feel free to go over to my twitch which is twitch.tv forward slash iconics with an extra x and if you want to see how you can stream yourself using the oculus quest 2 either both wirelessly and with the headset plugged in well that's going to be my next video next week appreciate you guys stopping by and i shall see you all in the next one bye bye for now